So, you're moving home, you paid your moving company to pack the boxes for you. But what must you do in advance to ensure that your move is a success and it is a stress-free experience? It's coming up. Hello everyone, it's Ant here from Relocations TV. Today we have a move into storage coming from Guernsey residents to our store. And this move, the customer has chosen for us to pack all of the boxes. They want us to do it because that way everything's insured. If you were to pack the boxes yourself, um, the items in the boxes cannot be insured just in case they were broken beforehand. Whatever the case may be, the insurers just will not insure anything that's packed by owner. If the goods are packed by a removal company, it's considered professional packing and that way everything is insured for the move. So often our customers don't know exactly what they need to do in advance for us to do a full pack because we pack things out of cupboards and off shelves. But there are a few things that you can do beforehand just to not cause any confusion because we don't want to pack anything that you may need. Every move is unique and comes with its own set of circumstances. Now, this move is unique because it's a flat move it's down a, a really tight lane. I'll, I'll show you the driveway. We can't get our vehicles there. I'm with a small van today just because I'm packing. We've had to suspend our unloading bay across the road. And the circumstances that surround this move is that this flat has been sold, but our customers not got their new place yet. So they are moving into temporary accommodation and all of these goods are going into storage. They have had to take some clothes and label some things here for us not to pack up and not to put in store. Because if we put them in store, then our customers got no clothes for the time the goods are in store. So you can see how tight the driveway is. I don't know if you can spot, you can see some signs at the end of the road, and that's where we suspended the parking so our loot and vans can park there come moving day. When we turn up to a move where we're packing all of the boxes ourselves, we expect to turn up to a fully functioning household. We expect to see things still on the counter, the microwave in the corner and the kettle where it normally is. We also expect the pictures to all be hanging on the walls and all of the mirrors. We expect all of the electrical items to be unplugged by yourself. You could take a photograph behind each device so you know where to put the wires when you're moving in. We expect all of the chest of drawers to be fully loaded up with clothes and also the wardrobes. All of the kitchen cupboards exactly how they normally are. So all of your pots, pans, crockery, just everything how you live on a day-to-day -day basis is how we expect the house to look. Before we start packing, we want to establish exactly what's not included in the move because we don't want to pack something you may need as we'll have to unpack the box and find whatever it is. As you can see here, our customer has labelled this orange bucket very clearly, do not pack. Labelling things and furniture is a very good method to communicate to our team what not to pack. Also, uh, notes like this one is also very good because we can keep referring back to it as we pack throughout the day. Another way is by leaving anything you don't want us to pack on the bed. It's usually a two day move, so the bed is on the second day. Our customer has done three things here to communicate exactly what not to pack. This allows us now to really focus on the move and really crack on with the hard work that's involved to get everything packed up. Now we've established what's not going and our team know that anything they pack is now included in the move, our team will go into a packing frenzy. They will use all of the skills that they use on a day-to-day -day basis to pack up your goods so they are safe and secure throughout your move. I know what I'm saying is really basic, but these fundamentals make a big, big difference. Establishing what not to go is really, really important because moving is on a really tight time frame. Our team are usually fighting against time. 
So if they're gonna pack something, stack it into a vehicle or in the store, and then it's something you need as a customer, and then our team has to go back, try and find the box, unpack the box, find what you're looking for. Sometimes they have to unpack like 10, 15, and they can just spend time just getting the box out itself just by unloading from the storage unit or from the vehicle because they've already loaded. So in order to stop that from happening, we just want to communicate exactly what's not going and not to be included from the start. And the best way of doing that is by labeling things like so, or finding exclusion zones. Exclusion zones like using the bed, anything on the bed not to pack, pack everything else. You could condense things into a kitchen cupboard and label that cupboard, do not pack. There's also other things that we cannot pack and on this move, what I found here is some jewellery. So jewellery, we cannot pack. It's something that our insurers just won't cover because the value of it, keys, jewellery, money, we won't pack anything like that anyway. Before the avoidance of doubt, it would still be good if you either take it out of the property so it's not here or put everything you need into a drawer. Now, as we pack, we're going to come in contact with thousands of items and we have to pack in a way to make sure that these items are safe and sometimes that could mean that you could end up with things in random places that you do not expect them to be so i just thought i'd mention it here because this happens quite a lot when we move out of storage people don't know where things are so for instance we may put lampshades into drawers like this the reason we do that is because that when we close that drawer, nothing can crush that lampshade. We also might put fragile items like this sooty here and a hat. You know, they wouldn't normally be in that drawer, but we put them in there for transport because that's actually safer than in our boxes that could potentially crush. Like this desk, for example, um, th this is like the cable, you know, clip here we would take that off because it could fall off the top and lose it forever. So we'll put it into a related item like this pedestal into a drawer. So again, it's together. Bulbs. Now bulbs are extremely fragile. And again, they just don't pack well into our boxes with loads of other items. I mean, you can do, you can put them in boxes and lots of movers do, but our method is to wrap them up in paper and find something like a Tupperware box or this shoe box here. Basically anything with its own lid. And then we would put this shoe box or Tupperware box into one of our boxes as well. And then there's this wrapping paper as well. Now, again, the wrapping paper is too large to go into any of our boxes. We wouldn't want to load this onto the vehicle just on its own because it could get messy, it could all unravel and, you know, be everywhere. So we just want to find the drawer of a chest of drawers. We close the drawer, we know it's in there and everything is nice, neat and tidy. And just a reminder of some of the things that we don't pack, we don't unplumb and we don't dismantle. Some of the things we don't pack are internet routers, we do not pack jewellery boxes. Some of the things we don't take include the Guernsey food bins. They stay at the property nowadays. We do take washing machines, but we do not unplumb them. As you can see here, this is plumbed in and this requires a plumber to do so. Also, sometimes they're just plugged into the wall for the electric. Other times they are hardwired into the wall like this one and this requires an electrician to undertake the dewiring of that circuit. We do dismantle all of the beds and all of the indoor furniture. You can see this hydraulic bed here that we're doing, but what we don't do is any outdoor furniture, any trampolines, any garden benches that could be put together, and that's merely because the fixings have been weathered for a long period of time and there's no guarantee that once we take it apart we can rebuild. But like I say, we do dismantle and reassemble all of the wardrobes, beds and any desks. The reason we do this and not the outdoor things is just because we know the fixings are good and once we dismantle it we can also rebuild. 
With the fixings, we'll put most of them back into the parts and the rest into a Tupperware box. So, just to summarise, if we're packing the boxes for you, we will be packing fast. And our main concern is packing something that you may need. We are always on a tight timeline, so if we can help it, we don't want to waste too much time unpacking boxes that we've already packed just to find something that you need. So we kindly ask for you to communicate to our team what not to pack by just taking a few of these steps. The best way to do this is by labeling things with sticky notes. You could even use post-it notes if you wanted to. Condensing things into certain cupboards and then labeling the cupboard, do not pack. Create your own exclusion zones, like a corner of the room. Put everything there. That sometimes happens in bedrooms when people are taking their suitcases of clothes, especially when we're moving people to the UK. They might put suitcases in the corner of a bedroom and say, do not pack any of those items. Another exclusion zone that works quite well is if it's a two or three day move and the beds are gonna be one of the last things we take. Some people will put everything that they need on the bed. So the clothes they're wearing for the next couple of days. And to completely avoid any doubt whatsoever, and if the items are small enough, just remove them from the house. Put them in a car or in a bag or, or at your friend's house or something like that. Because in that way, you know, there's no doubt whatsoever. Because sometimes we packed sort of like um, Tupperware boxes or, or any sort of small storage boxes. And when we pack them away and people's like passports have been in there and ID and things that they need. So, you know, although you know they're there, our team are not exactly gonna know that there's passports in this sort of little storage container. So we're just gonna see that as a storage container and put it in a box. There's more info about this in a packing ebook that I wrote and I'll leave a link in the description below. And in there, it's kind of covers about how you can pack an essentials box for the things that you need uh, while the movers are in. Uh, and it's really helpful book. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, you can download that very easily to any of your devices. And in the ebook, there's a list of things that we cannot pack, like paints, flammables, keys, routers, paperwork, passports, all types of things. So it's really in depth. So yeah, basically if we're packing the boxes, we want to know what not to pack. We will pack everything else. And the steps that you take to communicate what not to pack will ensure that you have a stress-free moving experience. Thanks for watching another episode of Relocations TV. Please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be bringing you all things moving and all things Guernsey. See you in the next video.